Welcome, everybody, to the Inner Carnivore Podcast, Episode 9, with my special guest, Terry Haas, today. Before we get in, uh, no matter what platform you're listening on, whether it's Amazon Music, iHeartRadio, Spotify, hopefully by now, uh, Apple Podcasts, or watching the full video on YouTube, if you guys could do a huge, huge favor, hit that like button, subscribe, comment, leave a review. Uh, it helps out a ton, and I really, really appreciate it. Jumping right in, how are you, Terry? I am very good. How are you, Jason? I'm doing very well. And just for anybody who's watching on the YouTube, yes, I did change my shirt so I could match up with what Terry's wearing. <laughs> we did not plan this ahead of time, but once I saw it, I was like, I, I got it. <laughs> right? So we, we've talked a little bit. Um, and in talking a little bit, you said that you started this journey back in 2016. Is that correct? In earnest, that's I like, did. That's like OG status. <laughs> that's like before any, like I, I meet people who, you know, are like, yeah, I started Carnivore in 2019. And I'm like, that's like ground zero. Like when Baker was yeah. writing his book, how did you, I'm always curious how people came upon this, especially so early on. You know, so I have a kind of a different beginning to all of this than, than the typical, I guess, carnivore or whatever. So just like kind of going back to my youth and that sort of thing, I was one that never liked fruits and vegetables. Never, you know, I mean, I'm 57, almost 58. So back, back then, you know, there wasn't a lot of fruits and vegetables that there are now. So it's really interesting even to um, think about that. I'm like, gosh, you know, I just don't remember eating fruits and vegetables, but they weren't really around back then to eat either. Um, and I was, I always loved beef my whole life. I mean, like, you know, if I was out with friends, they were getting their chicken and their salad and I'm like getting a cheeseburger with bacon and of course, French fries, cause that's my vegetable or whatever. And um, in two, 2016, I found a migraine group. Um, I used to suffer from migraines and that, um, that group's protocol starts with low carb, high fat. And so when we started there, they were still eating potatoes and they were still eating like uh, sprouted grains, bread, but pretty much dropped all higher carbs and processed foods for the most part. And then about eight or nine months later, um, the creator of that group also started a keto group. And so we learned lots more about keto and all that kind of stuff. And when I segued over to keto, um, I dropped pretty much, you know, all the, the grains and I dropped the potatoes, the starches and that thing, that sort of thing. And when I started over there, I wasn't tracking or anything like I, I don't necessarily track now either, but I do know what I'm eating. Um, and when I was tracking and eating over there, what I noticed from dropping the rest of those low carb, high fat foods, I was already eating for the most part, something that I call, or that we term hyper carnivore. And that is what people kind of know as ketovore, I suppose, where, um, and this particular hyper carnivore is where you don't necessarily eat plant foods with every meal and you don't necessarily eat them with um, every day. So like I would have 90% of my meals that day would be carnivore. And then maybe I would have a little bit of avocado or a little bit of onion or a little bit of garlic. And, um, and then in earnest, just because it sounded fun, I thought, well, I'm just going to drop all the plant foods because why not? You know, I mean, it was just, I don't know. I guess after a while, I, I think I've, I've seen this also in the carnivore community. Once you drop the plant foods, once you've gotten over the hump of missing the plant foods and missing the glucose and all the things that they do for you and they you think that they do for you, um, they they're strong for your for my palate. Onions and garlic are strong for my palate now. Like I don't I don't really ever buy fresh onions and garlic anymore at all. It's powdered or dried. Um, so. That was really how how it happened for me. It was just like I'm just gonna. I mean, I heard like you don't have to eat plant foods, and I'm like, bye. Um, but I will say, um, the so when I first joined that migraine protocol, I became migraine free almost overnight. I had already been eating kind of very similar to that protocol. Like I said, meat and fat heavy my whole life. I never really did low fat, with the exception of a short stint of fat free. And and my dad doesn't really like full fat milk, so we did do skim milk at home. As soon as I went to college, I'm like full fat, give me the full fat, everything. And I, and I never really quit. Um, and so, um, I just lost my train of thought. Oh, um, I totally just lost my train of thought. Um, once you get over the hump of the vegetables and whatnot, um, I didn't have anything to heal. So I just thought, let me just, just try this. And it's just been 
so easy. Um, I didn't have any transition period. I think already I was already in ketosis, not a healthy ketosis, but I had already kind of been what we call TRE, time restricted eating, um, almost since I went to college. Um, I never was a big breast breakfast eater. I did try to do the smoothie thing and, um, and you know, most of that would get tossed in the trash because while they tasted okay, that was a big habit to maintain, you know? So um, just by default, by just seeing that you didn't have to eat plant foods anymore, I thought, let me go ahead and just try this. And I love it. <laughs> I haven't really ever looked back. You know, I do, um, I hate to say seasonally eat fruits or something like that, because I just think in today's world, that's just silly. Um, I certainly don't live where I grew up and I certainly don't live where I was from, you know, my roots are from or anything like that. Um, but I do stick to low carb, high fat and, um, uh, sometimes, and I do segue off and eat some cherries and watermelon in the summer. And I'll occasionally have an alcoholic drink, um, when I go out. But other than that, I'm beyond satisfied, um, eating carnivore, I guess. what, And I just got back to my train of thought. Um, I will say, so the migraine group is a chronic pain group. So the people that joined that group were in chronic pain. We've already had lots of medications, lots of diet modalities, trying lots of things. And so, um, it, it was, it's kind of fortunate, I think, because the carnivore diet that we follow in there and that I have with my clients and that I follow is pretty broad. It's all meats, all seafood, all seaweed, eggs, mushrooms, and dairy with the exception of lactose free and um, fermented like yogurt and kefir quark. And then also all spices, dried spices. So no fresh spices or anything. So it, to me anyway, it doesn't seem like I'm missing anything that was like, oh yeah, that's my perfect diet. But I understand, you know, people don't quite understand like fresh, not having fresh onion or not having fresh garlic. But um, so yeah, so it's pretty inclusive as far as a carnivore diet is concerned in the broad spectrum of a carnivore diet. Super interesting about the the migraines. What's the what's the theory behind why that works for migraines? Well, so Angela Stanton is the creator and founder of the Stanton Migraine Protocol. And I was in another support group and I never really tried anything for my migraines. My dad had them. I thought, okay, I'm going to have these the rest of my life and I'm just going to be stuck in a room for three days and then recover. And one woman in that, that migraine support group kind of was looking for other things. I guess a bunch of people did, but I just never did. So she found Angela's pro, uh, migraine group. And she talked about it in this other group. And I thought, well, this sounds kind of interesting. It sounds a lot better than the, the group that I was in. It was like just this horrible Weight Watchers type group where everyone just complained and whined and there was no real answers. And of course, I was in there trying to be this cheerleader and I didn't know anything. You know, I didn't know anything from them. And I was like, but I'm not going to take medications. And I thought, well, there's got to be some way. Well, there wasn't in that group. So I read her first book and I joined that group and I was like, this is crazy. Like, I don't quite understand this. And over the eight years or so that I've been in the group, it is, it's morphed just exponentially. She's a PhD. She suffered, suffered from migraines herself. And that's what got her bed bound. And that's actually was her impetus to find like, what can I do here to learn about migraine? And so um, she found that migraine has its roots in glucose intolerance. So that right there Basically, we have a very ancient brain. We have more neurotransmitters. Our brain is structurally and anatomically different than somebody that does not have a migraine brain. So if you put in that ancient brain and you put in a modern and very terribly glucose-induced diet of today's society, you can see why migraine is so rampant, why it is such a huge albatross hanging on all of our necks, you know? So that's why where low carb, high fat came in initially. And that was what her first, her first book wasn't really about the protocol so much. It was just about her journey. And then she developed this protocol and it was low carb, high fat. And then just in more, and she, her research is never ending. So as she's come along these last eight years, um, she's finding out keto, we thought maybe would, or she thought maybe would be okay because it's even a further reduction of carbohydrate. And ketosis seems to really help with healing and autophagy and all those great things, right? And what she found out along the way is actually ketosis and the ketogenic diet and those macros and whatnot are not good for migraineurs. They actually make our migraines worse. And that is due to the fact that 
Our migraines are rooted in glucose intolerance. And that means that is rooted in insulin. And so when we have, um, and you know, without really saying everybody, but for the most part, everybody has the issues with insulin and insulin resistance these days. And for somebody without a migraine brain, you may get some headache. You may get this typical keto flu because you're reducing your glucose consumption and, and your exogenous glucose from plant foods and whatnot. Um, and that's not can that may not be so debilitating for you. You know, you can rest for a day or have this little bit of headache, but you can still manage and and live your life. But a migraine can put us down. I mean, it could be chronic. You could be down for four months. It can put you down for three days and then a recovery of two days. And so it's quite life disrupting. Um, and so if you move to ketogenic or higher fat macros than what your body is ready for, that will give you more migraines. And so that can be why migrainers think that the ketogenic diet doesn't work or that the carnivore diet doesn't work. If they're looking at what typically seems to be higher fat macros in the general carnivore community. Um, typically we need more protein to start out with to provide this excess glucose that um, the, you know, the protein can turn into or provide versus the fat. We can't reuse fat as fuel initially. So that's where all of that ties into. So you have re reduced your carbohydrate um, consumption and then, or your plant consumption, and you've increased your protein consumption, reaching your leucine threshold, which will allow for protein synthesis, which is actually the basis of healing. So that will allow the mitochondrial healing, the cellular healing, allow the insulin to heal, allow your liver to heal, allow everything to heal. And then once your insulin is more stable, then it's time to increase the fat, reduce the protein a little bit. But we really will never move to a true ketogenic diet because that's really limiting because there's not enough protein there in order to reach protein synthesis. So in order to really stay on a ketogenic diet, you need to have that higher fat ratio or macro, I should say, um, in order to thrive for that. That's super interesting because um, my wife has migraines and they're not, not super bad. Um, and she's usually only down for, you know, an hour or two, but mm -hmm. given, you know, I don't like to talk too much about my family, but given the nature of what she does, it's not something that's okay. Mm -hmm. um, so that's super, super interesting. So for people out there who maybe have migraines or like borderline completely rudimentary, like I know there's a lot more to it, but from a macro standpoint, what is the like macro levels that you suggest starting at as opposed to like a keto, which is, as you said, the much higher fat to protein ratio? Well, so the, there's two components actually, and the, and Angela's research looked into, or her first actual discovery was finding that migraine is the root cause of it is actually electrolyte imbalance. So we Throughout the day, like I have, of course, this is pretty much anybody in the carnivore low carb community, but um, I take salt with every single one of my waters and hydration is extremely key because that's electrolyte water, our water and salt. And then in our meals, we eat potassium heavy, which is pretty easy to do on a carnivore low carb um, diet because everything is in a pretty much whole state and that's potassium heavy. And then we balance our meals to a certain ratio. So those two components, meaning the macros and then the, your electrolyte balance or your potassium and ratio balance um, can help you become migraine free. Um, so I, I don't really want to get into her specific protocol since that's her thing, but we do keep protein higher and fat a little bit lower, but it's not, um, it's not, it's about 60 to 70% fat and 30 to 40% protein. Um, and then we also do, um, we compute macros differently than the general public as well. So that's based a little bit differently to, so that we know that we're getting the right amount of protein in there and the right amount of um, fat. Because uh, conventional computing of macros skews fat and protein a little bit when you do it by percentage of calories. Can you dive into that about how you, how you calculate that? Because I'm like, I'm a macro guy through and through. Like I've, <laughs> I came up, you know, sports and nutrition and bodybuilding and personal training. And like, I would do out my, like, I'm an Excel spreadsheet guy. Like I would do my diet okay. Excel spreadsheet and like do formulas and be like, today I'm eating, you know, 44.3% protein. And tomorrow yep. it's going to be 44.4 because I'm going to have, you know, so I'm, right. I'm like a macro guy through and through, which is tough because carnivores like, right. 
don't do that. Right. So this is like, I don't care about anybody else. This is for me. I want to, I want to know this. Um, yeah. So, um, we use, uh, we use chronometer to track because that's the most, uh, um, most accurate app. There's not going to be anything m most accurate out there. And then we're also within that app. It's not like we just get a general, like we're not looking for, you know, Kirkland's red, you know, red beef patties or whatever. We're looking for generic entries that are verified and whatnot. And we use, um, it's calculated by weight in grams for, for uh, carnivore. And we don't take carbs into the macros calculations whatsoever. So even though there are carbs when you eat, and there's no carbs-free way of eating, um, but we don't take into carbs, like dairy carbs, we wouldn't ca count because that would not affect um, insulin as much as like, say, for instance, if you're going to eat oysters or liver or eggs and mushrooms, those things, especially oysters, those are pretty high in carbs. And if we are going to be glucose intolerant, if you have this carbs threshold that you're going to be exceeding, you're going to have to um, do something to bring the salt back in the cells or bring the, and remove the gl glucose from the cells, whatever. So um, weight in grams is how we compute our macros for uh, and just with fat and protein. So that's it. So it's really interesting to see when I see other people posting macros and do this sort of thing. And I just, and they all think they're eating really high fat. And I'm looking at them going, eh, you know, you're, you're really pretty much following protocol, which is good, really, to be honest, because like I said earlier, pretty much everybody has a degree of insulin resistance. And if you we're not so different migrainers and non-migrainers. Like you can't just jump right in and start eating higher fat because that's going to give you a, a fuel deficit. You're just not going to be able to utilize that. You're going to have sugar crashes and lethargy and tiredness. And then you're going to think the carnivore diet didn't work for you. And, and it's not that it didn't work for you. It's just that you don't know enough yet to understand what it is you were doing right and what it is that perhaps you needed to hone in on and correct a little bit. So if you have somebody, so say you have a new client and you know, they, they want to kind of get started and they eat. And I'll use this term because I'm, I'm using a real life example, sure. um, relatively healthy, right? Mm -hmm. Like I know you've heard this and I know I've heard that I'm like, it's pretty good. And you're like, Oh really? Let's, let's dive into this. And it's like that six cups of ranch that you just drizzled on that salad would say otherwise. Um, oh, ranch but, is healthy. Salad isn't. <laughs> But, but relatively speaking, like somebody yeah. who prioritizes protein, uh, still eats carbs, but, you know, tries to get carbs from whole sources, you know, fruits, uh, you know, potatoes, rice, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. What would be your suggestion on how to ease their transition into a carnivore type, you know, a, a 60, 40, 70, 30 type macro split? So honestly... I'm one that will just, I work with my clients. So if I, I mean, if I have a migraine client from the group, it's a little bit different than if I have a non-migraine client, you know, it's very similar, but it's also very different because we have just a little bit different set of stipulations for us to feel our very best. And we also have different motivation from somebody that doesn't have severe pain all the time. Um, so somebody that doesn't have severe pain can kind of segue into it a little bit slowly if that's their choice. Somebody that's a migraine client, I really encourage them to, if they're going to be moving to carnivore, to to literally drop all the plants immediately. What happens if you do not drop the plants is, I mean, if you kind of still keep like moving into hyper carnivore, then you're in this keto level, ter uh, keto level carb territory, which again, they're just not metabolically ready for. So you're going to be fighting with blood sugar drops and hypoglycemia and your, your liver not knowing when to release insulin and then releasing too much insulin. And for somebody that's a migrainer, you're going to be having pretty immediately immediate results having a migraine. So you're, like I said, the motivation there is pretty quickly. Somebody that is, doesn't have migraine, I'll just ask them, okay, so what are your favorite foods? What are foods that you do not want to include in your diet? And what would you be willing to give up quickly? What would you be willing to give up a little bit slowly? And then really just over time, work with them that way. Or if it's just going to be one appointment, um, then we say, let's just develop this plan and say in four weeks, you're going to drop this in four weeks, you're going to drop this. So it really is a tailored individual thing. And it just depends on what people are willing to give up and what they're not willing to give up. And in that, you know, I do give them information on like, well, if you're going to be keeping this, let me go ahead and give you some information on 
the health benefits of keeping this and or the health detriments of keeping this, you know? So just trying to really, really get in there and go, look, if you can get rid of processed foods, seed oils, and starches to start off with, that's a great start. Um, you know, the, the added sweeteners are always going to be the hardest ones, full stop, you know? Um, and I, I know that I'm going to probably say something that's really shocking. <laughs> um, I know a lot of people move from sugar over to added sweeteners, um, you know, that it are. And I really try very, very hard to get them to move back to sugar and use that as their added sweetener. And I mean, of course, ev I don't think I've ever had per one person go, oh, okay. They've all been, oh, shock, horror, oh my gosh, you know? And so I just try to give them a lesson on why plain old sugar is better for you than the other sweeteners, also full well knowing that there are no added sweeteners that are good for you. Um, but sugar is the best one because at least the body recognizes it. The body knows what to do with it. Um, when you use those other added, not all of them, but many of them, the body doesn't recognize those, um, like stevia, for instance, the body doesn't recognize that. So what happens is you will still get insulin released, looking for glucose, looking to remove glucose from your body, but it doesn't find anything because the body doesn't recognize these sweeteners. And so insulin is just coursing through the body. And then the next time you eat though, that sweetener again. And here comes your insulin release and there's nothing in there for the, for insulin to do its job. And this is the very way that insulin resistance gets started. So at least if you eat sugar, your body knows what to do with it and it will remove it from your body. Now, yes, that will also wreak ha havoc with your insulin, but at least you're removing one of the detrimental things that the added, the other added sweeteners will do. So that's a really big one that I really, um, I do these PSAs and I've been doing them ever since I started my insulin, uh, my, insulin, my Instagram channel. And um, I'm just going to go ahead and say that they're really not public service announcement. They're kind of public shit posting announcements is kind of what they are. And I mean, I, and I just, I, I started them with just the sole intention of just saying some truths and that's it. There are no judgments. They're just truths. Do I follow those truths all the time? Heck no. But I know that they're truths and I know that I can make now an informed decision based on those truths. I get a lot of flack for those. People don't believe them. And, and I just say, you know, I'm just the messenger. I'm, I'm not judging you. I'm just sharing things because I don't see these things out here. And I just want to inform you. And, um, so um, th there you go. I, I think that's a, a super important point um, because, so I, I avoid, this. this especially happens on Twitter. I have a, I have a more broad following on Twitter. Um, much more includes, you know, keto, low carb, but also a bunch of uh, a fitness community, which okay. for the most part don't prescribe to carnivore, which is fine. Sure. Like that, that's totally fine by me. Yeah. Um, because that's like my background and that's, you know, I'm all for like gym bro science. Okay. Because I think a lot can be learned from that. Oh yeah. And that, that's the one that I avoid all the time, partly because I'm not a hundred percent sure on how to attack that, but it's like the diet Coke versus Coke. And my short answer to people is without being able to give you a biology lesson, or a, a human A and P lesson, I can tell you that I have personally experienced clients where just getting them to give up diet Coke has made huge changes. Like I couldn't get them to give up anything. And I'm like, okay, just do one thing. Like just give up diet Coke. Yep. And they're like, why? why? Ah, I can't. I'm like, dude, dude literally so just yeah. give up diet Coke and you will be, and like, we're talking like 20 pounds in a month. Crazy. Yep. And from a, no, I can't explain that. Like I can't explain, I mean, I, how I would explain it is that there's a metabolic response that happens when you drink diet Coke, that's going to keep you from losing weight. That's all right. there is to it. Right. It's right. not as simple as, as calories in calories out. I know that like yeah. I've, I've been a, a calories in calories out guy. I can, you know, I will argue with people on calories in calories out as long as, you know, the foods are correct, mm -hmm. but that's a super interesting one to me because 
no matter what, I have never, ever proposed that anybody use any artificial sweetener because I don't think there's a good alternative. And yep. when people, I've actually had this conversation with a couple of people about like one of my problems with keto is not necessarily the principle behind keto, but keto has morphed into this. How can I make this as close to what I used to eat as possible while yeah. still skirting the line that it's okay? Right. And I got a bunch of flack a couple months back. I posted a, uh, a cheesecake my wife made and I was like, I ate it. I ate a whole bunch of it. And you know what? I'm okay with that. And they're yeah. like, well, next time you should do this and you should do a keto of like an almond flour. And they should, I said, no, absolutely not. If I'm going to do a dessert, it's going to be sugar. Like yep. I, I might buy it. Right. I'm not, I'm not above that. Right. But ideally like it's going to be made at home. I'm going to use sugar. I'm going to use sourdough starter and I'm going to do it all because I am not trying, like, I'm not trying to trick my body into anything. There's the foods right. that I eat that I know are not good. And there's the foods that I eat that I know are good. And I'm not trying to meld yep. that together. Exactly. Well, that's interesting you say that because, um, so I think we have similar views on the ketogenic diet, ketogenic diet as well. Um, I actually, I have coined it MSAD, Modified Standard American Diet, the, the fad keto diet that everyone follows. And in going back to like, so what what I have discovered and also Angela discovered, we've kind of all discovered this in the, the migraine keto group, that while keto has had its time when, when it first came out or when we first learned about it in 2016, even though it's been around for a long, long time, whatever, but it kind of first became popular um, and everyone, oh, I'm in ketosis and I'm this and I'm that and I'm this. What I've, what I've learned since is the ketogenic diet, the real only real ketogenic diet out there is really a diet that somebody that has epilepsy or cancer or that absolutely cannot have glucose in their brain. It is not a fad diet. It does not contain coconut and almond flowers. It does not contain fake sweeteners. It does not contain coconut products. It is a diet for somebody that must not have glucose in their brain because their brain cannot have glucose in it. They have to have super high fat and run on ketones all of the time, you know? So, um, so I'm, I feel the same way as you. It's like, the, the, I am going to eat real sugar with real butter with, you know, with real this, and I'm going to make it at home if I'm going to do it. Um, I don't do it. I I'm sure I'm added sweetener free. And that's just because of my, my migraine stuff. And I've been added sweetener free for so long besides the alcoholic drinks. Though that, those are very sweet and I get sweet ones. Um, but it just doesn't taste good to me anymore. As a matter of fact, about 18 months ago, I even moved to using um, whipped tallow with like two or three drops of clove oil in there for my toothpaste. And it was, I've oil pulled before that. And that's just what it reminds me of and stuff. The strangest sensation about it is when you're done brushing your teeth, there's no cool, minty, fresh taste, right? But you get over that pretty quickly. Um, and every once in a while, just because I don't even know why, Oh, let me just grab this toothpaste again. Cause I still have a toothpaste to clean. I have a night guard that I sleep in. It tastes like the most horrific poison and my mouth burns when I eat it. And so my, my first thought, I have a three-year-old granddaughter. My first thought was like, I wonder if I bet you, this is how every kid who gets toothpaste in their mouth. I have feels. a story for that. Because it doesn't taste good. Even though it's sweet, it, it burned. It tastes like chemicals burning my mouth. And that was kind of a, aha moment like okay interesting so what's what's your story <laughs> so i have like i still use the standard toothpaste i haven't that's a lot of i haven't moved away from a lot of things like i've kind of come to the realization that there's so many things in this world that i'm going to worry about a select few sure um like i had this conversation on one of my last ones where it's yeah sure in a perfect world you know i'd get rid of all of the pots and all of the pans and all of the scents and all of Right. But I'm, I'm also like, I, I, I concede on certain aspects mm -hmm. and people can agree and people cannot. And that's, you know, your own choice. So still do the toothpaste, um, but we have children's toothpaste for the mm -hmm. boys. Right. And so I'm brushing his teeth and he goes, ah, I was like, what? Mm -hmm. And he goes, that's spicy. I was like, what are you talking about? It's the same toothpaste. He's like, no, it's spicy. I was like, no, you're, you're being ridiculous. Continue to brush. He's like, ah, no, like that. Yeah, that hurts. I was like, what are you talking about? You're, you know, and this whole time I'm like, you're being ridiculous. Like it's the same yeah. stuff I do every single day with you. I see. And then we get to the end and I was like, 
oh, I straight up gave him my toothpaste. And that was his reaction was he's like, oh, no, like you're literally burning my mouth. Like that's spicy because I accidentally gave him hit my toothpaste instead of his. Well, it also made my teeth sensitive. Like, I mean, I've never had sensitive teeth. Well, I've had sensitive teeth because I know the feeling like when you've had like you know, low gums or something. Mm -hmm. And that's the exact same feeling, too. So he's not lying. And I mean, this would not be anything I would have ever known had I not moved to tallow, you know, toothpaste. And I mean, let me just say, like. I don't, I mean, I still use, I still use Costco shampoo. I haven't moved to tallow shampoo, although I use tallow in my hair. I use tallow in my body, I use tallow in my cooking. And um, all of a sudden, I don't even know why I moved to tallow toothpaste. It was just a thought. And it, I thought, you know, I wonder if it's a lot like oil pulling. And I did enjoy oil pulling when I was done, when I was spitting it out. I liked that smooth feeling in my mouth. I didn't like sitting there, you know, doing that for five minutes, whatever. But, um, and so... I even did a, I think I did a video. I did do a video on it just to show people. And it's the weirdest thing. Now I've gone to the dentist three times since then. And I've not gotten any, I mean, not anything. Nobody said anything. Nobody said it's looked better or worse, but I, I do have good hygiene, mouth hygiene or whatever. I have good teeth. I have good horse teeth. <laughs> so, <laughs> but that's pretty interesting that your son felt that too. And, and he's not wrong. Yeah. And I, I, once I realized it, I was like, okay, I can totally see that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, obviously I felt terrible because I'm like, bro, like you're making this up. Like it's literally the exact same stuff. And I know it's like the most watered down nothing that you ever have. And yeah, so that's, that's super funny. You bring that up because yeah, it's 100%. <laughs> so going back a, a little into how do you handle carnivore and the use of spices? Cause I have my own experience and I'll, I'll share this after okay. I grill you about it. <laughs> Um, so really, honestly, as far as I'm concerned, there's no spices that are off the table. Um, and as a matter of fact, I have a coffee pie, a carnivore coffee pie that I, am um, was a little bit concerned about at first, but I mean, there's like two tablespoons of co de decaf dehydrated coffee, freeze dried coffee and the whole thing. And I just said, you know what? I'm calling it carnivore because I'm eating it. <laughs> uh, people drink. And, I, and to be honest, I mean, I don't drink coffee, but if, if you're, if you drink coffee on your carnivore eating, I would still consider you carnivore. Yeah. I mean, I just do, you know what I mean? Um, to me, fresh plants. I mean, if you're sticking fresh coffee leaves in your, maybe you're not so carnivore then, you know, but a dried herb or spice, I think for myself and for thousands of others in migraine group are fine. Um, I will say though, if I'm using fennel seed or if I'm using celery seed, I have got to grind that up because that stuff is, is, too spicy or too flavorful, too strong for my palate. And my stomach will kind of rumble. It's like, mm, it's a little too close to plants for me, you know? So I'll grind it up. Um, and I've also noticed that I've reduced the amount of spice. If I add spices to something, like I used to, you know, do the tablespoon or whatever of, of onion, of, of onion powder or something. Now I'm down to like half a tablespoon. I also recently did this gyro meat, carnivore gyro meat, which I was like, so excited about. I didn't know that that was that easy to make and that flavorful. And I must say that the first time I made it, I was just like, <laughs> the spices were far too much for me. So the second time I made it, when I made the reel for it, even though I lied and said however many much, because that's how much the recipe called for. But for my personal taste, I needed half the spices because it's just too spicy. <laughs> I, I had the exact same experience. I did uh, um, a, Euro, a lamb Euro burger mm -hmm. with uh, tzatziki. And I saw that real. It looks delicious, by yeah, the way. Super good. But I was like, whoa, like this is like, I can't remember what, what spice it was exactly, but I, I picked it out and I was like, okay, that's a little like a little yes. much, but that's, I, I've come under the same thing. And, and my contention with anybody who brings it up, cause I, I get this, that's not carnivore. That's not carnivore. I'm like, okay, well, how much do you want to break down? What is carnivore and what isn't carnivore? Because some people want to go, oh, would a lion eat that? And I'm like, okay, well, yeah. first of all, a lion is, would fall into the hyper carnivore and hyper carnivores only have to eat 70% meat. So there's 30% right. coming from something and they ain't getting processed dairy products. So right. there's something else out there. <laughs> or I can go to like a wolf, which is 50% carnivore and they eat a whole bunch of berries. So we can go down that road or we can go, if that's our point of contention, whether I use a little bit of garlic powder then that means your diet is so on point that we are splitting hairs. Yes. And I'm telling you right now that there's nobody watching my videos that is so on point with their diet that we're going to debate whether a tablespoon of garlic for a four pound roast 
is going to do anything. Exactly. Now I have started to go away. I, I still do some where I'll do like fresh onions or fresh garlic in mm -hmm. like a broth. Mm -hmm. um, but I found that the onions, especially I'm like, All right, like that starts to, to affect me, not terribly, but I can tell. Yeah. So I've, I've started to move away from the onions, but I'll still do them every once in a while, like in a crock pot or something like that. Like cooks, not raw. Yeah. And I don't even eat the onions, but it's just in oh, the just broth like, that cooks like, the meat in it. So it adds mm -hmm. the flavor, but I'm not actually eating the onion. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm of the same opinion where it's, and I'll, I'll do a little bit of like fresh herbs for garnish sometimes. And people are like, why yeah. are you doing that? I'm like, cause I'm making a food reel and it's a color contrast and it looks better. Like that's, that's just the, the way it is. Like, oh wow. That's the blandest looking reel I've ever seen. I know right. it's carnival. Exactly. Like people will do that and they'll post it. And they're like, man, that looks terrible. And I'm like, okay, so do you, would you rather it looks better and people who have never even thought about carnivore see it and go, okay, I might be able to do that. Right. And their contention is that they do a little bit of parsley on top mm -hmm. or do you want to make it super bland and you see the same thing that I eat every single day and everybody goes, I can't do that. That's too boring. So I'm like, yeah. come on, like at the end of the day, I'm still producing content and I'm trying to make it look good. Like, and make it no profitable and sustainable too. Like give people ideas. That's the whole exactly. thing is ideas you don't have to copy me per se you can but take what i'm doing and roll with it and create your own kind of content or your own meals or whatever exactly exactly that's the whole point and like so sometimes i'll do like i did nachos with jalapenos and tomatoes on it and people are like oh my gosh i can't do nachos I was like then don't i was like that's why i make it yep. so yeah it's a little bit at the end of the day throughout a serving that i'm eating i might have you know a quarter of a tomato right and you know what do you want to avoid that sure avoid it just take it off. Yep. But guess what? It looks way more appetizing like this with the different color contrasts yeah. than if I just did it super plain and you're like, you should have added this. <laughs> like, that is, that is the hardest part. Like it is nice. Like if you, well, and of course most of my things are the treats. So there's not a whole lot of meat in there. So there's not even any pink contrast in my videos. You know, they're all yellow, brown, white, cream, taupe, <laughs> tan. <laughs> so I know I was super excited whenever I did the black, the black cocoa stuff. And I'm like, yay, contrast. <laughs> <You know? Yeah. laughs> like people don't understand that. I'm like, I'm not like an expert at like chef food, anything, but I understand that yes. if I can get multiple contrasts of, and that's like, I'll use different cheeses. They'll be like, why'd you use that cheese? I'm like, cause it's a different color. <laughs> like that's literally <laughs> the only reason <laughs> it's well, because this is like yellow and this is yellow and this is yellow and this is yellow. And yes. guess what? It just looks like a yellow blob. Like I'm eating big bird or something. <laughs> that's the daggum truth. <laughs> I'm cracking up. <laughs> well, and I also too, what I like to say too is, um, I mean, like going back to this, this reel that I just made. So that it was a top sirloin and, you know, I mean, you get oxidized myoglobin, right? I mean, it happens. And if you don't eat meat regularly and if you think your meat's a little gray and that's bad, then, okay. So yes, I had, you know, this is as dark as my soul or this is gray as my soul. And so, okay, this is a learning opportunity so I can teach you about, you know, oxidized myoglobin, which can be a bad thing when you get to a certain degree. And I said, but color of meat is not the be all end. I said, you have two other factors, this test and the slime test, right? So if, if it smells bad, don't eat it. If it's if it's slimy, you don't eat it. And then I also just, and then he, this person came back and said something, well, you need to cook that longer. And I said, look, this just sounds like a win-win. I get the steak and you don't have to have the steak. And that's how I feel about spices too. Like you don't want to have spices, more spices for me. You don't want to have dairy on your carnivore diet more dairy for me. I don't understand the, um, I don't understand that, that divide there. I don't, and it's, it's sad because it should be inclusive. We should be trying to get everyone in. And so this little, like you said, this nitpicking and splitting hairs of like your, your carnivore diet doesn't include dairy. That's fine. Your carnivore diet doesn't include that. That's fine. Not everybody is doing what you want to do. Not everybody wants the results. Not everyone's the same, you know? And if you think that you're carnivoring harder than me because you don't have dairy, let me just fill you in, okay? Because <laughs> you're not. <laughs> I just love dairy and I happen to you know, be able to enjoy it, include it in my diet, and that's okay. Yeah, that's, see, that's, that's a huge point for me because people don't understand what the outside perception of carnivore is. And, you know, some people will be like, why do you care? Like I've, this is episode nine, right? And I've had eight people on here 
And like, I could do a list and I, I still have a bunch more coming a list from all like pages of stuff that people have rectified or reversed. Um, I had this gal that I just did that had a Parkinson's diagnosis reversed, like got oh, off rheumatoid arthritis medication, yes. um, had a stroke and basically was like, had to be cared for. She was like an assisted living mm -hmm. essentially. And now she's just killing it, like working out, like walking miles and like on her first. own and yeah. yeah, and all of these things like IBS stuff and medications and blood pressure and just boom, 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 boom. And if you're somebody that like suffers from that kind of stuff, like wouldn't you want to know that maybe there's like migraines, right? Wouldn't yeah. you want to know that maybe there's a diet out, even if you don't stick with it, even if you don't do it, you'd still want to know that it's out there. Correct. But the problem is the average person, when they hear carnivore diet, they go, you just eat meat. Like yep. it's the only thing you ever eat. I'm like, well, it's not that simple. And they're like, well, that's what a carnivore is. I'm like, okay, that's why I'm trying to like broaden it. My <laughs> idea of carnivore is there's three stages of it and it's in varying strictness. Like you have the lion diet, which right. is meat, salt, water. Like that's the only thing, red meat, red meat, salt, water. Yep. That's the only thing that you eat. And then you have carnivore, which is, you know, a wide variety of meats, dairy, if it's tolerated. And then maybe you have some spices and, you know, maybe you drink coffee mm -hmm. and then you have animal based and people are like, well, animal based isn't carnivore. I'm like, at the end of the day, like the most polarizing figure and the person who got carnivore out more than anybody is Paul Saladino. And that's his thing. Like the right. dude wrote a book, the dude's name was carnivore MD. The dude has a million followers. Mm -hmm. It's like, you can like nitpick on whether, you know, he's gone off the rails, whatever. Right. But I, I think that's still a, a loose interpretation of carnivore where you add some fruit and honey mm -hmm. and people, people don't understand. Like the outside people don't understand that there's this huge gap and it's made worse by the people that you're talking about. who are like, that's not carnivore. Right. Like, I am carnivore and that is not carnivore. And you're like, <laughs> okay. I'm like, well, I don't think everybody needs to do lion diet. You know, yeah. when, when the average person is asking me, they're like, so like, is it really just that? My, my go-to is whatever you're trying to rectify, like the severity of that is the severity of the diet you need to do. Mm -hmm. And I always go back to, uh, Mikhail Peterson, like Jordan Peterson's daughter. She is severe. Mm -hmm. Like that girl was on rheumatoid arthritis medication at the age of 12 years old. Right. Right. Like that is like for people that don't know, that is not okay. Like that's an autoimmune, like Normal. suppressing medication for right. a 12 year old. And she has all of these issues. Yep. And so, yeah, she has to be that severe because that's the only thing that works for her. And now she's doing amazing. She's pregnant now. Like that's oh, wow, I don't think I awesome. knew that. Yeah. That I think she awesome. just, I saw a picture a couple of days ago. I think she just that's announced so that. Great. Right. And so she's doing amazing because that's what she needs. Right. If you don't have those issues, you don't have to do lion diet. Like right. you right. don't have to go that extreme if you don't need that extreme results. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I try and get out there. And that's why I post that I eat fruit and I'm, I'm eating less and less. Mm -hmm. Like I found myself, you talked about like adapting to it. Mm -hmm. It took me probably a year where I would still have, you know, a serving or two of fruit and a serving of honey because I felt better. Right. And now I'm getting to the point where I'm like, honestly, I don't, I don't know that I need that. And so I'll How been carnivore. Uh, I started, so I, I started super loose. Um, okay. I started September of last year. So a little over oh. a year. Okay. But you've come a long about, than yeah. So when you talk about going in easy, I was carnivore for my meals. Okay. Like my meals were carnivore, but I would still snack on fruit. Um, if there was, you know, some kind of snack that I wanted to have or alcoholic beverage, I, there was no hold barred. Okay. And I still felt better. Like I felt a lot better. Yeah. And then it was the first of the year. So a couple months and I was like, okay, maybe I should like take this a little more stricter, but I was, I was very ease into it. Mm -hmm. Um, and it wasn't a, as huge of a transition cause that's not low carb, high protein. The, the higher fat content's a little unusual for me, but mm -hmm. low carb, high protein is like been my staple when I'm, yeah, I'm gym, trying to do gym something. Science. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. You know, chicken breast and rice. Uh, yes. So it wasn't, it wasn't, people just, yeah. how do you do more chicken recipes? I'm like, 
want to eat chicken anymore. <laughs> the last time I ate chicken, and you will probably. I actually, a recipe that I'm doing for Thanksgiving here, I've got a stuff, um, carnivore stuffing recipe I'm doing. And um, it's supposed to call for poultry seasoning, and I don't have poultry seasoning, but I bought a package of something from Trader Joe's, and it's got vegan chicken seasoning. And yes, I'm putting that in my, it's got like paprika, turmeric, garlic powder, and onion powder. Well, my, my question is, how would it not be vegan? I love these things. They're like, this is vegan. I'm like, how would you make it not vegan? Like, my first grind like, up some chicken bones and put it in there just so it's not vegan. I Googled poultry seasoning to see what was in it because I fully expected to see poultry in there. And I thought, oh, this will, because I was going to go to the store to buy the poultry seasoning. I said, this is good enough. Yeah. Because I see, I'll get those every once in a while if, if they're out of like rosemary or thyme, because I love rosemary and thyme. Like I'll cook with that all day long. Um, like I said, I don't eat it, but like that's basting steak yeah. or whatever. And they mm -hmm. have like the poultry seasoning herbs. Which is mm -hmm. just that with sage. It's just exactly. thyme, rosemary, and sage. Yep. So how how would it not be vegan? It's like, yeah. I love they have to put vegan. This is vegan. I'm like, I want to see the non-vegan version. <laughs> like somebody, please show me that. Right. Well, you know, getting back to what you were saying too about like the 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 strictness. So in the migraine group now we've got almost sixteen thousand members, and so. Oh. You know, this is a chronic pain group, and along with the the migraines, I mean, there's lots of com com comorbidities that come with migraine, like EDS is comorbid, I IBS is comor comorbid, but um, we also have just due to the nature of our diets and stuff, so many people with fibromyalgia and PCOS and other autoimmune um, conditions and metabolic health conditions, because we also have people that come in that do not have migraine um, that are, are are allowed to be in the group as well, and so. Um, and then just in, it's, it's very easy in, in the group mindset to move people over to carnivore because most people want to heal very quickly, you know, but just like you're saying, just to attest to, I mean, there have been very few people that we have seen, not seen reverse their health conditions, like literally every single autoimmune condition, every single metabolic health condition, condition. I can't tell you how many babies we have had that have been born um, following carnivore because their PCOS has reversed and their, um, all of that has reversed whatever. So it is, it is um, even though it, it, it is the norm now that we see in the carnivore community, I don't think there's a time that I just don't get excited and overwhelmed with just pure joy just from compersion, from the other, you know, feeling joy from the, for the other person and knowing that the huge ripple that that one person can now turn around and make with just their improvements and that sort of thing. And then also in keeping with that, with your um, uh, saying of how, you know, how do you eat just meat? That's the exact reason why I started Terry's Carnivore Treats. I mean, I love to eat meat. The treats that that I make on there, I don't really eat those treats. And maybe I might have started when I first, you know, started my carnivore journey, but they weren't around then in 2016. I didn't start that until about 2019. And it all started with because I wanted a sandwich and God forbid if I ate another flipping chaffle, I was gonna die. And so I just said, I'm not to chaffle. And I went and Googled and Googled and Googled and it was dark and I was still Googling and I came upon the soul bread and I looked at that and I took one look and I'm like, it has olive oil and stevia. And I'm like, well, olive oil was subbed for butter. Let me just drop the stevia. And there I have modified soul bread. And so that's how all that was born. And so I just thought now to show people like it isn't about meat. You don't have to eat meat with every meal. Meat is king. You will want to get back to meat. But if you have meat aversion for this meal, have a carnivore milkshake, have some of my brown butter ice cream, you know, um, just so, or if you feel like eating a little bit of meat and then have that in a carnivore milkshake. So that's what I do with my, especially my migraine member clients. Um, you know, they, they come in and they're vegan or they're vegetarian. They don't have a lot of meat in their diet, which is very common across the board. Um, and say, well then start out this, have a little teeny tiny cheeseburger, which you're getting some meat in there, which we need. And then the cheese helps it go down and then have a carnivore milkshake, which is whey protein powder, a little bit of heavy whipping cream, a little bit of milk. And then you're like having a cheeseburger and a milkshake. And that goes down easier. Have a bite of milkshake or a bite of burger and a drink of milkshake and it'll get down and 
pretty soon your palate will change, your taste will change, and you'll be able to eat enough meat and you won't have to rely on my treats as much. And, and, um, or you can, you can have them with every meal. They are healthy. They, they have great uh, protein in there and leucine in there and whatnot. So, and now I have kind of branched out um, initially, like I had this captive audience of 15,000 people and they wanted to eat my things. So I know that the foods that I'm creating are palate pleasing for a carnivore, or low carb, high fat community. Um, so I got lucky that way. And now I'm branching out. Now I'm just like, let's see what I can do here. Let's see what I can do here. And somehow or another, they all seem to kind of work. You know, I don't know how it happened, but they do. <laughs> that's it's so funny because like, that's like my exact story, but from a, a meat standpoint, and I'll get the same thing. I'm like, yeah, just don't have the bun. Or like, yep. why are you trying to recreate bread? I'm like, well, I'm loving like, your, what you're doing with the halloumi as a bun. And that's fabulous. I'm totally loving that. Yeah. And I'm like, people like, I'm like, okay, you don't understand. Like, I don't eat this way. Like, I literally just, I, obviously I eat the food that I make. Like, I'm not, yep. I don't waste it. But like, I don't eat this way very often. Like, I have the most boring food ever. Like, I just ate three hamburger patties with literally nothing on. And sometimes I forget to season it. Like, yes. It's, like I eat boring. I eat steak. I eat eggs. I eat bacon. Like I do not come up with these creations because I don't need that. Right. Like I, that has been my staple. And that's why, honestly, why I got into bodybuilding. I was like, because I can do the diet that mm -hmm. other people can't. Like I can yeah. eat very minimally seasoned chicken with cold rice. I can do it. <laughs> I don't want to, but I can do it. Mm -hmm. And I, I enjoy this way of eating. So I don't feel a need to change, but there are people out there who can't. Like there's people that need variety or they need yeah. to feel like they still have, you know, creativity mm -hmm. with their food. And that's why I do it. Mm -hmm. And that's why I add buns. No, I don't need a bun. I'd eat every burger without a bun. Like, right. yeah, I don't want to take the extra time bun to make fills up room where the meat can take place. That's how right? I feel. About it. Or it's extra time. Like, yeah, it's like, I don't want to spend the time, but there are people who miss like being able to meld flavors together and all that kind of stuff. So yeah. I think it's awesome that you're doing. Um, I honestly have never made one of your recipes and I, I probably should try it just because, but I'm not like a sweet, like I don't miss sweets. Right. I miss cheesecake once in a while. And so like maybe once or twice a year, I'll eat cheesecake. Like on Thanksgiving will be mm -hmm. the last day before I do, I'm going to do BBE. -B -E. Okay. Um, so I actually like talked to my wife. I was like, Hey, if I make you like a bunch of food, will you eat it? Because I want to keep making reels, but I don't want to eat most of the stuff that I'm going to make. So will you eat it? And she's like, yeah, sure. Just don't make it too crazy. Like I like simple. I'm like, okay, cool. <laughs> nice. I was going to, I was thinking, I was like, man, I'm going to have to like do like a public service announcement and be like, Hey everybody, I'm not falling off the grid, but for like a month, I'm not really going to do any food reels because you I'm trying to like go super basic with this. Right. But yeah, it's the same thing. And it's people have such a hard time separating what we put on social media and what we actually do on an everyday basis. Like I can post a reel every single day, that doesn't mean that three meals a day I'm spending six hours in the kitchen. Like, right. This is just for ideas. Like, just for I, don't ideas. Know, I don't know how many people have been like, Oh, that's awesome. I'm going to make that and be like, man, that was amazing. It's like, it was awesome to be able to like hold my burger for once. And right. And or, have like I did a thing down. Yeah. 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 Like I did a steak sandwich and they're like, Oh my gosh. Like, like, yeah, like it doesn't have to be that at the end of the day, if you just want to put steak on a plate, like eat that. But it's yep. just to give people ideas That's and so give them. Funny. Well, I know. And I, I even, so I did initially like say I wanted to keep my, um, my YouTube channel a hundred percent carnivore. And then I realized, well, I have this lemon poppy seed MSB that I have. Right. And so I put a lemon there and I'm like, I'm still going to call this carnivore because there's just a little bit of lemon juice in there. Well, I went ahead and segued over and did a pumpkin uh, loaf, a pumpkin MSB. And then I also did, it was a two for a uh, pumpkin bread pudding. And I came on and I said, okay, this definitely is not carnivore, but this is in keeping with a way, healthy way to eat it if you want to do this, right? So um, I made an entire batch of bread, of the, the bread pudding. With the loaf that you see there, I cut most of that up and, and froze part of it and then made that whole bread pudding. I ate whatever you see me, the bites that in, in the thing, I just threw out the bread pudding yesterday. Like, I think it had mold on it. You know, it's like a month old. I'm like, I'm not going to eat this. I kept thinking I was going to eat it, but I'm not going to eat it, you know? So, and that's, that's tough. So what I've even started doing now, and I'm starting to either half or quarter my recipes because mine are treats. It's not like it's just one burger. Like I have this berry crumble pie that I made and it was so, I loved it. It was so good. So I decided to make it again and um, to make it a little bit bigger. And so I made it a half recipe or whatever. So, 
and just say to people, I, it's me, I live alone, I'm single, nobody else eats this way and I just can't continue to throw food down the drain and, and it just is wasteful. That to me hurts my heart and it, yeah. it isn't what I wanna represent either. So I'll just like, look, I'm quartering this, Quart, you know, quadruple it and it'll be a regular serving or whatever. So, but yeah, most of my stuff is going to be treats. There's not a whole lot of savory and that's specifically to kind of draw people in. But I mean like carnivore, uh, lobster mac and cheese, that's a really good one. They're using kelp noodles and that one's not sweet. That's awesome. <laughs> well, I think we're going to have to do like something where it's just cooking. Like we got to do like an Instagram live or a YouTube live or something and just do that's cooking. What I was saying. When I PM'd you, that's exactly what I was thinking. Maybe like, like, we, we pick a meal or a dish and like we do our versions of it or we cook it together or whatever. We'll have to figure out something. Cause I think me, you and Melly or whatever, I think that would be a lot of fun to do. Um, and anybody else that wants to join in, but yeah, we, I think that would be a lot of fun. Awesome. We will set that up. Okay. So before I just like talk for forever. Um, oh my God, it's already been an hour. Okay. I know, right. <laughs> okay. Anybody who wants to get in contact with you, find your social media stuff. Where do they find you? What are your names? I am Carna Terry, Carna slash Terry on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, and then I'm just Terry Hawes on Facebook. So that's where you guys can find me. I will link some of Terry's stuff. Uh, if you guys haven't checked her stuff out, uh, she is a baking slash cooking wizard. Uh, I'm still not sure how she gets the stuff. I've tried to make a couple like breads way back in the day, and I'm like, this is the worst thing I've ever tasted. <laughs> and you make it, and I'm like, I feel like there's something, I feel like she's doing the video and then like putting some sourdough in right at the very end and not telling us about it. <laughs> she's not, I'm just kidding, but. No, not at all. No, uh, you've got to try the MSB. As a matter of fact, so I, um, that's the stuff I'm making a stuffing. I've never made the stuffing before. I've got the things dried out. They finally dried out for me and I was like already am amazed. Like, okay, I've tried this a couple of times. It's never worked, but I finally got it. So I'm so excited to try stuffing today. <laughs> well, I will look for it. Um, everybody else go give Terry a follow. Um, follow her on all of the platforms. I really appreciate you being on Terry. Uh, thank, thank you Jason. everybody for listening. And until next time, everybody have a good one. All right. We'll see you soon.